I feel fairly comfortable with, uh, you know, where things are headed for, for the sputter. Uh, you know, what can we eventually expect when it comes to ramping up with the Gigafactory in place, the number of Teslas that you push off the assembly line? Well, I, I mean, I feel uh, I'm comfortable that we'll be able to achieve at least uh, half a million cars a year by 2020. Mm -hmm. Back in 2014, Elon Musk was being optimistic when he said he hopes Tesla would produce half a million cars in 2020. Today that prediction has largely come true, with Tesla hitting its production goal of 360 to 400,000 in 2019 and expected to do even better in 2020. Over the years, however, Tesla has had to contend with more than a handful of loud, outspoken bears and critics. In fact, around the start of 2020, according to NPR, Tesla was the single most shorted stock on the US market. One particularly vocal critic of Tesla has been Mark Spiegel. And in this video, we're going to take a look at some of his claims and see how they're doing as of February 2020. The whole Tesla thesis can actually be summed up in, in three sentences, okay? Um, number one, they lose a ton of money with essentially no direct competition, and yet there is a massive amount of competition coming very, very soon. So his first point here is essentially that Tesla is going to be outcompeted by the big boys in the industry. And he further justifies this claim elsewhere by stating that these other companies just have too much experience in production and will be able to subsidize any losses as they roll out new EVs through sales of their other vehicles. This prediction was supposed to come to fruition sometime in 2019, and it's not exactly a crazy prediction or anything. However, it obviously hasn't come true, and needless to say, so far it's lost Mr. Spiegel and his firm a ton of money. We're going to get to those numbers in a little bit. Jaguar, Mercedes, Audi, and, um, and uh, Porsche are coming out on the luxury and with electric cars over the next 1 to 12 months. But the truth is that so far, even with these competitors entering the market, Tesla has only increased its EV market share and its stock has continued to see massive growth so far in 2020. One thing that shorters have seemed to miss is the difficulty involved in developing batteries that compete with Teslas, as they've got about a decade head start. A perfect example of this is Mercedes-Benz and their parent automaker Daimler. According to a German publication called Manager Magazine, in 2019, the brand was meant to sell 25,000 of its new EV model, but the German report said the automaker sold just 7,000. That's almost, well, that's less than 30%. And now in 2020, Daimler has slashed its EV production figures in half, from 60,000 to 30,000, largely due to battery shortages. So again, it's not crazy to have predicted that an influx of competition could be a problem for Tesla's EV market share in 2019 and 2020, but so far that prediction has been just mostly incorrect. It hasn't come true. Number two, they have absolutely nothing meaningfully or sustainably proprietary. And in fact, in some ways, their batteries are now obsolete, but it's a design that they originally came up with probably when they designed the first car around 2006. So here it's kind of funny how his second main talking point comes down essentially to Tesla having, quote, nothing meaningfully or sustainably proprietary, end quote. And then he immediately brings up their batteries. He couldn't have really seen the production hell coming for Tesla's competitors due to the shortage of batteries. So this isn't really such a crazy talking point after all. But again, as we just saw, making car batteries isn't as easy or as quick of a process as he seems to think. He didn't account for Tesla smartly going after battery producers in order to slow the production for its competitors. And in the meantime, Tesla continues to develop the next generation of EVs and gobble up more and more market share. At the current rate, Tesla is set to dominate enough of the market to sustain their growth and continue to produce new and exciting vehicles. And this only adds to their almost cultish base of supporters. Tesla's branding is powerful and effective. By the time the other main players really get off the ground, Tesla could already be a staple, and it could be too late. But even if Tesla were to take a dive in 2020, or say 2021, 2022, whenever that happens, if it happens, the fact still remains that Spiegel and other bears have been consistently wrong on their short positions, as all of their predictions have fallen flat, and they've collectively lost billions of dollars, which we'll get to right after we address Mr. Spiegel's third point, which is basically just a character assassination of Elon Musk. And number three, 
Uh, Elon Musk is just an incredibly untrustworthy stock promoter. And you know, in my letter, I've documented many, many instances of him you know, just outright lying. I mean, the guy on a conference call, we don't discount our cars for anybody. And then you go to the website and there's a $1,000 discount referral program going on, or you can get brand new inventory cars at that time at thousands off. So those three things are a, a toxic brew. So look, to be perfectly honest, I don't know how accurate or true those statements he made about Elon Musk are. I can neither confirm nor deny whether or not he's engaged in risky or dishonest stock promotion. All I can do is look at the current numbers and try to deduce who was right, or at least who has been proven right up to this date. And I can tell you right now, it's not adding up in Spiegel's favor. In fact, as of early January this year, Daily Mail says Tesla short sellers had lost around $8 billion over the past several months, with Spiegel himself, according to NPR, having lost over $1 million on short positions since he started back in 2014. Now, while it may be fun to rub this in the short sellers' faces, the truth is they're not even really convinced that they're wrong. They think they'll be proven right eventually, especially Spiegel. In the following quote from him, you can see how he sort of justifies his losses by claiming that Tesla's stock is simply decoupled from reality. But sadly, that's the same reality in which he's lost over a million dollars. Quote, It was at 20% of the fund, sometimes a third of the fund, and I slashed it back today because the stock price is just so decoupled from reality. He said of his decision to cut back on shorting Tesla. I'm the world's worst predictor of Tesla stocks he went on to say. And I can't say with any confidence that he's wrong about that. But it's kind of hard to feel bad for Mark because at the end of the day, it mostly appears that he's just betting against Elon Musk because he doesn't like him. His interpretations of the stock have been consistently wrong, yet he continued to burn through over a million dollars because, I think, he was blinded by his personal bias. That's how it looks to me, at least. He could have taken heed back in October 2018, when Andrew Left of Citroen Research did a full 180 on Tesla, costing Tesla shorts over a billion dollars at that time. Or he could have taken Musk's warning back in 2012 on Fox Business more seriously, where he predicted, quote, a tsunami of hurt for those holding a short position. Again, whether or not anything Spiegel has said about Musk is accurate or true, I don't know. But I do know that what Musk said back in 2012 turned out to be exactly the case. Now, if you like this content and you want to hear more from us, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and bye for now. I've, for the past three, four years, hated Tesla. You looked at it, every car company goes out of business. When are they going to make money? When are going to people look at them as a car company? And only looked at the small, you know, bumper sticker, meme-like thoughts on Tesla and not the deeper ones. And as a short seller, the most important thing you have to do is check your thesis all the time and see when things change. And when they started with Model 3 and the launch and the production and the numbers and how they were eating from the top and the bottom, and I realized it wasn't an EV revolution in this country. It was a Tesla revolution. The people want to own the Teslas. And if Steve Wozniak doesn't like his Tesla, that's fine. There's plenty of people who want them. And they're really turning things upside down. The way it's being sold, doing away with the dealer networks. And then you start saying, how can they make these margins on the cars? And you see, go ahead, it's not me. There's a consulting company that break down, they do a teardown of Model 3 and show it. And then you take it to the number and say, you know what? Even if you don't want to buy it, when the stock was 265, heavily shorted, knowing they're going into a quarter, the first production quarter, with Bailey Gifford, Fidelity, and T. Rowe owning all the stock they're not selling. They didn't stick by this guy for four years, SEC, fraud, Ambien, wine, everything else for them to as sell. An investor, I, yes. I own a Tesla. I love the car. I do not own the stock. Mm -hmm. I have a simple question. Sure. All the car companies around the world that have a long history of making cars and making money mm -hmm. trade it between 13 and 17 PE. When and if this company ever makes money, why isn't the stock going down to $42 and it will join its compatriots at a 14 or 15 PE? The old, why is this stock the, not going to go south? Because the old way of selling cars and how you look oh, at cars... Oh, it's different this time. It is different <laughs> this time. Oh, yeah, sure. This Thank stock you. is going south. Well, I should I, I, how about this? I can tell you right now something. The dealer network is a ridiculous concept. All right, I, I would never let my wife or my daughter, oh, let me finish, go ahead and buy a car. You look at the way Tesla sells the cars, not only are they generating more margin, they're actually making it better. If you look at the non-union aspect of it all, the, the less outsourcing of parts, they can start making money 
The other companies, unfortunately, can't just change their whole business models. When you want to start an EV company, you just can't be half pregnant. You're there or you're not there. But, but now, the, yeah, now, 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 I'm not saying test. I should pay a hundred times. How about this? That? I'm not saying with my report, I'm not saying tomorrow you wake up. And I'm not saying the shared mobility. I'm not buying any of those stories. Could they happen? Maybe. I'm saying it was an overcrowded short. And you look at the people who own the stock, the big shareholders who own a lot more stock than anyone I know short was short. And what do they know? What are they looking at? What models are they looking at? And once you cross out all your prejudices against the company okay. and against Musk, it's different. Well, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, hang on one second.